Greetings, my friends. I am Felix Kingston. In the beginning of the 17th century through to 1651, I had the esteemed role of a religious printer and publisher in London, focusing predominantly on Reformed and Puritan works. I obtained this vocation as handed down from my father before me, I was especially privileged in my day to print some of the works of that famed Westminster Assembly. It is my distinct honour to introduce you to the esteemed theologian John Green, pastor of Pencom, a stalwart in the Presbyterian and Reformed ministry, and a dedicated member of the Westminster Assembly of Divines. Today, Puritan Publications undertakes the noble task of bringing his timeless works to the modern reader in contemporary English. I would like to draw your attention specifically to his book titled The Fall of Adam and Other Works. Contained within this volume are three rare and invaluable pieces that stand as the sole remnants of his preaching and writing. Notably, the treatise on Adam's fall is exceptional in its coverage, exploring Adam's creation within the covenant of works, his constitution, and the saddening and horrible realities of the fall. Green also addresses the crucial question of why Adam fell and explores the often overlooked aspect of how the fall occurred, a topic of immense importance. Additionally, this compilation includes two remarkable sermons that offer profound scriptural insights. The first, titled The Church's Duty for Received Mercies, draws from 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 24, urging us to fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all our hearts considering the great things he has done for us. The second sermon, Nehemiah's Tears, is a compelling exposition on prayer and fasting based on Nehemiah chapter 1 verses 3 to 4, emphasizing the connection between heartfelt devotion and communion with the God of heaven. This volume is readily available at Puritan Publications, offering both ebook and print editions. I wholeheartedly encourage you to secure a copy from their website and immerse yourself in the biblical insights that Green provides, especially regarding the fall of Adam. Furthermore, allow me to extend a moment of encouragement. Many Christians grapple with the question of how God can command seemingly impossible acts for fallen humanity. Phrases like, be perfect, walk holy and be righteous, can appear daunting. How can fallen man do any of this if he is depraved to his core? This stems from a misunderstanding of the nature of the fall. Green will illuminate the fact that God retains the authority to issue commands, even when they seem unattainable for fallen individuals. Despite our fallen state, God continues to communicate with humanity as if addressing Adam. Just because men sin does not mean that God should change the way he deals with them. His sovereignty permits him to establish and enforce laws regardless of the depravity of humankind. People are obligated to obey these commands, even in their fallen condition, which renders them inexcusable when they fail to do so, driven by their inherent aversion to God and his laws. By comprehending that God's initial command to Adam aligns with his subsequent commandments, one can grasp the significance of understanding the fall of Adam, as elucidated by Green. May your walk with Christ be blameless, guided by his holy word. With these blessings, I bid you farewell. Amen.